I had low expectations for Jedi Fallen Order. This is because of the previous 2015 Star Wars Battlefront, which was a rushed project with limited multiplayer options and an expensive season pass. Then there was Star Wars Battlefront 2, which offered a weak single player campaign and launched like a free to play game with a multiplayer economy that destroyed any interest I had in further playing the game. Also, the gameplay previews of Jedi Fallen Order made the game look like a generic platform and action adventure game. I was completely wrong. This game is fantastic. It's the Star Wars games fans have been asking for for years. Offering a well put together single player adventure with varied worlds to explore a great cast of characters and strong lightsaber combat. This is what you've been waiting for. If you're a Star Wars fan, this is the game to play. Jedi Fallen Order takes place years after the event of Order 66's execution. Jedi survivor Cal Kestis is now surviving as a scrapper on an isolated planet. However, things take a turn for the worse when Cal agrees to a dangerous job. The assignment goes south and Cal uses his force abilities to save his friend, resulting in the Empire locating his position. Cal must now run and quickly gets saved by two rebels who successfully encourage the young Jedi to help rebuild the Jedi Order. I'll stop there for the sake of spoilers, but the adventure is pretty standard, with Cal going to several worlds to accomplish this goal, but also going through difficult physical and emotional challenges, the biggest being a Jedi and coming to terms with his past failures, with his convictions constantly being tested during emotionally traumatizing events. One of Cal's crew members, Kree, goes through similar issues and must resolve them in her own way. Grease, who serves as the pilot and ship captain, is given the weakest role with, but remains a strong part of the crew by being the tension breaker during difficult scenes between Kree and Cal. Overall, the narrative is far better than Battlefront 2's story with Cal growing and coming to terms of who he is, eventually growing closer to the crew and then becoming more like a family than just partners in this adventure. Jedi Fallen Order focuses entirely on core Jedi mechanics, this means lightsaber and force powers, no blasters. It's clear that Respawn took reference from From Software's work, with similar concepts found from Dark Souls and Bloodborne, but with their own take on the systems. The lightsaber combat focuses heavily on finding openings in your opponent's defenses and striking. You still have to dodge and evade, but parrying is heavily encouraged. It allows Cal to reflect or block incoming fire and break through close range enemies defenses. There's no heavy attack but you can amplify certain attacks using the force which is based on a meter that charges when you attack an enemy. If you perform a successful parry you can cause fatal damage or a one hit kill against certain enemies or constantly block attacks if you hold down the button. Blocking is dictated by a stance meter. But unlike Neo or Sekiro's shadows die twice, there aren't multiple stances to take advantage of. But breaking an opponent's stance means Cal can get a free hit in, but the same rule applies to Cal. If his stance gets broken, he'll tumble or the enemy can take a free hit on him. Cal can use the force to push, pull, or slow down enemies, but you cannot spam this. As stated before, your force meter drains as you use it, and it only recharges during combat when you hit an enemy. Which is prudent since the force is quite pow powerful in this game, especially when fully powered up. You'll fight stormtroopers mostly along with indigenous life. The life forms on each planet are unique, but they're mostly annoying. Unlike stormtroopers, the life on these planets have vexing battle conditions such as explosive, toxic gas, or moving mid attack to track Cal's movement. There is another type of enemy faction that you're able to that is able to dodge Cal's force abilities. These enemies can be a bit tricky to deal with, but once you get down the pattern, it'll be easy to deal with them. The enemies themselves can be tricked rather easily with invisible barriers that prevent them from leaving certain areas, so you can trick them and leave them behind and only attack enemies from afar or pull them in with the force push, allowing you to gain free hits. The most elite but common enemies you encounter are purge troopers. These elite warriors follow under the Inquisitors, an enemy sector of the Empire who are specifically trained to kill Jedi. They offer the biggest challenges as they come equipped with the best armor and weapons. They're also 
somewhat rare encounters, so facing one doesn't get too tedious. They also come with unique weapons that the regular stormtroopers don't have, even the commandos, and utilize unique attack combos and patterns. The lightsaber duels between the Inquisitors make you feel like you're in a Star Wars movie and are the best part of the entire game, with you reading your opponent's movements, looking for an opening, and striking. There are fights against bounty hunters and one against a large animal, but these are lackluster in comparison. The primary issue with the boss battles is that they do repeat themselves. You'll fight the same bosses over and over. The bounty hunters, specifically despite being different people, always use the same tactics. Outside from combat, Cal will have to engage in puzzle solving and platforming. The platforming is adequate, but it can be frustrating. Unlike Cal's combat movements, his exploration animations are a bit sluggish. He doesn't have the exact movement to make precise jumps. In some cases, he does have to make these precise jumps, especially when needing to combine his force abilities during platforming challenges. Thankfully, you have infinite force when using them outside of combat, so you don't have to worry about having none during combat. The puzzles are a bit more challenging, but they are clever. The puzzles make use of Cal's abilities and utilize the environment effectively. Just analyze the environment and the items and options available to you and you'll be able to figure out a solution quite easily. The various worlds, with the exception of the final location, is teeming with hidden secrets and optional cosmetic chests. Taking reference from Metroidvania titles, Cal can use his powers to unlock new paths. Respawn has provided a helpful map to showcase the various paths that Cal can access throughout each world, and if you cannot access a certain area, the game will actually indicate this in both the map and in-game with a red highlight until you can access the area, which means it's easier to determine whether an area is inaccessible. The optional chests within each world mostly unlock cosmetic items for Cal, his lightsaber, the ship, the mantis, and his droid buddy BD-1, the exception being additional stim packs which heal Cal during combat. Skill points allow Cal to upgrade his lightsaber skills, force powers, and health. These are earned by killing enemies, obtaining force echoes, and scanning the environment which expands on the game's lore. There are optional energy orbs that increase Cal's force and health meter, so Respawn gives you a lot of reason to explore the world. Upgrading Cal is only possible through meditation points, which also respawn all the enemies in a given area if you choose to heal and refill all your stim packs. BD-1 is Cal's droid ally that can slice through locks, hack droids when upgraded, and serves as Cal's travel companion. Despite only communicating with classic droid noises, little guy does a great job of helping Cal and being a positive influence both within the game and in cutscenes. Plus, personally, I really liked his design. I thought he was the best designed droid I've seen in the Star Wars universe, but taste is subjective, but I really liked him. Once you complete the 20 hour adventure, you can keep playing before the finale, but it's strange that you cannot replay the final mission since you're playing the game before the finale. You also cannot manually save, which can be annoying if you want to replay a boss encounter or go through a specific mission. If you want to do it again, you're going to have to replay the entire game. What really made Jedi Fallen Order really stand out for me was the fact that this was Respawn Entertainment's first attempt at an action-adventure game. It's not as staggering when, as when Guerrilla Games made Horizon Zero Dawn, but it's still goddamn impressive. Much of the sound surrounding Jedi Fallen Order has been taken from the Star Wars franchise, so you'll hear the same iconic sounds of lightsabers being activated, lasers being shot, and more. The voice acting is terrific. Cal's voice actor and model, Cameron Monaghan, did an exceptional job with his voice uh, complimenting Cal's movements and feelings, and the sporting cast did a complimentary job as well. The soundtrack is what you would expect from Star Wars. If you like the score from the films, you'll hear a lot of familiar tracks. I personally didn't remember any of the original stuff, only the more iconic scores, so it depends on your taste, but personally, if you love the Star Wars soundtrack, you'll really like this one. Jedi Fallen Order does look amazing, from the character models to the environments. As the voice acting complements the character's actions, so do the animations and visuals, with impressive detail put into the characters 
various outlooks and how they're feeling and the game's various worlds. The game also has incredible lighting especially when you light up your lightsaber. I did wish there were more sequences where this was critical but there aren't really a lot. The draw distance is also something I noticed. If you are high enough into a world you can not see most of the landscape which is pretty impressive and you can also see little enemies if you look close enough. I did encounter a noticeable amount of characters popping in and clipping into terrain, but it was nothing truly game breaking. I mean, the game did crash once for me, but I don't think that's a big deal. I mean, it was just one crash. Maybe it's the lingering salt from the rebooted Battlefront series, but Jedi Fallen Order is one of my favorite Star Wars games. The great story, strong combat, and impressive boss battles gave me more reasons to play through the adventure multiple times. Don't get me wrong, there are some issues, the narrative can become a little dry at times, and the lack of an optional save function would have been appreciated. It's not incredible, but it serves a great starting point for the future of respawn action adventure games. And I really hope we get more Star Wars games like this, because this one is definitely refreshing no more of those other Star Wars games this is a turning point and I really hope EA will put more money through developing games like this not just Star Wars games but more games like this but nevertheless great job Respawn Entertainment you show you can do more than just first-person shooters we're in Dathomir Zepho it's your choice <laughs> 